Hi there, Tara here with Quilts Plus Love. Today I'm back with an all new project for you. I'm gonna be making a gallery frame style t-shirt quilt. This quilt is gonna be given as a graduation gift this year. And believe it or not, mid-February, my quilt studio goes into full on graduation mode. So go ahead and start thinking early. Today I'm gonna to be using all school colors in this graduation quilt. And if you're interested in grabbing the pattern, I will link it in the description box below. This is by far the most popular pattern that I offer. Let's get started. As usual, the first part of starting any t-shirt quilt is gonna be rough cutting out the graphics that we wanna use. I've got the t-shirt set aside. I'm gonna go ahead and cut all of the graphics. Then I will stabilize those graphics on the back side of the t-shirt. I will also link some other videos in the description boxes below. That way you can grab tutorials on just those specific techniques. Now that we have a rough cut on all of the t-shirts and we can get to the back side of each of the graphics, I lay my t-shirts face down on my ironing board and I always use a fusible interfacing on the back. For the gallery frames layout, you need one background color and one frame color at minimum. For our quilt today though, we're gonna use black as our background color, and then I'm gonna use a light gray, a medium gray, and gold, because those are the school colors for this particular graduation quilt. So the gallery frames pattern is written to include all of the measurements you need up to four frame colors. I also do include all the measurements and the math that you'll need to know in order to calculate an infinite number of frame colors. So if you wanted to have every shirt framed in a different color, this pattern gives you all the information to do that. As you can see here, I'm starting to break down the fabric and I'm, um, I'm cutting it into strips of fabric that go the full width of the fabric. What that means is when you have the bolt and you unroll the fabric from the bolt, the width of fabric goes from selvage to selvage. So you're gonna be cutting straight across. The pattern, of course, gives you instructions for how to calculate how many strips you need based on the size of quilt and the number of frames you want in each frame color. So the quilt that we're working on today is going to be a twin XL. That way it can fit a college dorm bed. So I'm going to finish breaking down all of this fabric into the strip sizes that we need, and then we'll get started framing out our t-shirts. As I begin sewing, I always sew the side frames on first and then I finger press them open. That way I can get a good crisp seam uh, when I iron them flat and I always press with the seam allowance or the extra t-shirt material and extra fabric going to the outside away from the t-shirt. That way it just lays a little bit flatter and it's easier to get a flat seam on quilters fabric than it is to get a flat seam on t-shirt material. It just doesn't hold that seam very well, or it just doesn't hold that structure very well. So the next thing I'm gonna do then is, with these pressed open, I'm going to sew the strips across the top and across the bottom, and then this block will be ready for sashing before it's set in the quilt top. Once you have the frame pieces attached to your t-shirts, what I like to do is lay each of them out and I will very carefully press those seam allowances open. While I do this, I'll also trim any extra threads that I come across and really need it, I'll also lint roll it at this stage too. So I know I've talked about this in other videos, but it is absolutely critical that when you are pressing a t-shirt or anything with any type of a graphic or applied vinyl on the front, that you make sure you do not touch that section or that area with your hot iron. It'll ruin your iron, it can destroy the t-shirt graphic, and it'll really just cause a big mess all the way around. What I like to do is set that seam first with hot iron while it's still closed, and then just very lightly tease it open and then finger press it as I go. That way as the heat hits it, it sets that seam again. And then very lightly on the other side. 
Once you're sure that that seam allowance is set and your block is nice and flat, then you can move on to the next step. I have one more quick little tip for you, and this is actually information that was not available in the pattern because it wasn't really something I thought many people would come across, so consider it a YouTube exclusive. In the event that you have a t-shirt that is just slightly larger than the standard block size, what I typically do will go ahead, I will go ahead and frame it out as usual as I've done here with this block. And then I will measure it in each direction, divide the difference between how large the block is to how large it should be, divide the difference there in half, and then I will trim just the littlest bit off of each side of my block before I set it in the rows with my sashing. What that does is it keeps all of my blocks the same size. Even if the perimeter, if the frame around this t-shirt is just even a quarter of an inch smaller, you're never gonna notice that in your finished quilt and it will make everything come together so much easier in the long run. So that's just a little tip for you if you ever have that come up.